Hey guys, what's up? This is Nikhil from Dope Motions and welcome to this brand new After Effects tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create this really cool looking 3D text morphing effect into After Effects using Trapcode Particular. So I hope you have this plugin and in case if you don't, the link will be in the description so you can go and buy the full version or download the free trial version and get started. I would also like to give the credit to Matrix for this really nice concept. So with that said, let's just get started with the tutorial and let's just see how to create this really awesome thing. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to keep this to let's say 1280 by 720 should be good. Then I'm going to bring the frame rate down to let's say 30 frames and comp size or duration to about 5 seconds. Then first of all, we need to type in the text which is going to be our title. Now let's just type in, let's say, particles. Now we need to keep in mind that the particles are going to be generated from the text. So the color of the particles depend on the color of the text. So instead of using a single solid color, I'm going to create a combination of two different colors so that the particles have some color variations. Then let's just pre-compose our text layer. Now this is very important cause Trapcode Particular does not read text layers. So we need to pre-comp it in order to make it work. Make sure our text is 3D. Then I'm going to create a new solid. Hit Ctrl Y on the keyboard to create a new solid and I'm going to name this let's say Particles. And then I'm going to add on the effect that is the Trapcode Particular effect. Just go and select it and drag it on the layer. I'm going to change my emitter type from point to layer grid. Then we need to go to the layer emitter and select the layer, the text layer as the emitter. So now you can see the particles are generated from the text. Now we don't need the settings so I'm going to keep everything as 0 and the emitter size Z to 0 as well. Then I'm going to go to my grid emitter and as we increase the particles in X, you can see the particles are increasing. So I'm going to keep this to let's say 700 and particles in Y to let's say, let's say 300 should work good or maybe 500. Then we need to bring down the size of the particles. So I'm going to keep this let's say around 2 should work good. Now you can see we, we are getting this kind of a jagged edges which we are going to fix later on. Then just increase the life per second so that we have particles throughout our composition. If your composition is 10 seconds or 20 seconds long, make it 10 or 20. Now in this case we have a 5 second long composition so I'm going to keep this at 5. Then we need to keyframe the particles per second because I want the particles to appear from the very beginning of the composition. So we need to keyframe it so I'm going to go all the way to the beginning of the comp and bring this down to let's say 60 frames or 60 particles per second and go up frame forward by hitting page down in that way the particles are gonna stay at one place I'm gonna go and close the emitter and particles and bring down my physics tab parameters go to air and go to turbulence field now if I go a little bit forward in my comp and if I play around with effect position you can see we get this kind of an anamorphic kind of an effect so I'm going to keep this at a very high rate, so let's say 1000. And now if I move my spin amplitude, you can see we get that particle spread kind of an effect. So I'm going to keep this at 20. Now I'm going to bring my evolution speed to let's say 20 and the complexity to around 1. Now we, we can also change the way the particles are looking or the way the pattern of the particles. It depends totally on you guys the way you want to keep it. So I'm going to keep this, let's say I'm going to leave this here, it looks pretty good for me. Then we need to keyframe the effect position and spin amplitude. So I'm at 2 seconds, so I'm just going to hit on the stopwatch and create a keyframe for spin amplitude and effect position. Then hit U so that we can see the keyframe. Then I'm going to go to let's say 1 second and bring my spin amplitude and effect position to 0. Now I'm going to bring my spin amplitude to keyframe to uh, 10 frame maybe a 10 frame backwards or 20 frame backwards so that the 
particle spread from the very beginning then I'm gonna go to let's say 3 second and bring the spin amplitude and effect position down again to 0 so now we need to copy the keyframe that we previously created so I'm gonna select my spin amplitude keyframe just hit ctrl C and ctrl V and it's gonna just copy paste our keyframes and you can see we get this really nice looking effect now I'm going to select the keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. Alright, so far so good. Then I'm going to go in my text comp and duplicate and create my second text. So I'm going to hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'm going to hide my particles text and let's type in morphing. You can type whatever your title contains. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give it two different colors. So I'm going to highlight this morph maybe with a, let's see with an orange should look good. Okay, now we need to create the keyframe between both of this text. So I'm going to play around with the opacity of this text. So I'm going to go to let's say two seconds, which is a uh, very center of the composition and select both the text and hit T to bring down the opacity. Then I'm going to hit on the stopwatch to create a keyframe on opacity. Then I'm going to go, let's say, 10 frame backwards and bring the morphing opacity to all the way down to 0 then I'm gonna go to 2 second and 10 frame forward and bring the particles opacity to 0 this way we have a smooth transition of an opacity between the text layers this way we don't get any you know empty space between them and that's what we want so we can see a smooth transition from particles to morphing now if you had any blank space in between the particles wouldn't have appeared in that so we need to keep in mind that there's no blank space or an empty space so that the particles stay relevant now I'm gonna fix this kind of a choppy edges so I'm gonna go to particles then maybe I'll just zoom in in my composition and turn on my text comp then I'm gonna select both of my layers that is the particles layer and the text layer and hit T to bring down the opacity let's say at one second I'm gonna hit I'm gonna create a keyframe by hitting on the stopwatch of the opacity and bring it single or one frame backwards and then I'm gonna turn down the opacity to zero then I'm gonna hit on the stopwatch of the particles opacity go a frame backwards and bring this down to zero so I hope you get it what I meant to say if you don't you can just pause the video and you know just figure it out but I hope you get it so now I'm going to select and just bring this a little bit forward and just select it and hit F9 to easy ease. So this way we're going to get a really simple and smooth kind of a transition. Maybe two seconds or maybe I think one second is pretty good. Alright, so the same thing I'm going to do with the morphing. So I'm going to just zoom out, go to let's say around... 3 seconds so now you can see it is looking pretty good I'm gonna go to around 3 seconds hit on the keyframe or the stopwatch and create a keyframe go a frame forward bring the text opacity to 100 and the particles opacity to 0 so I'm gonna spring this down a little bit backwards maybe okay this is looking nice maybe a little bit forward All right, so this is looking pretty nice. You see the transition is looking absolutely seamless, looking pretty good. Then I'm gonna create a new camera and keep this to let's say around 24 millimeters. That way we're gonna get a really nice and wide lens. Then I'm gonna create a new null object and make it 3D. But before creating it, we're gonna just rename this to camera control. Then I'm going to hit A on the camera control that is the null object to bring down the anchor point properties and just bring them up to 50 by 50 that uh, that way the null is going to be at the very center of the comp. Then I'm going to make this 3D and parent the camera to the null. Then I'm going to go to let's say one second and hit on the stopwatch of the X of the Y rotation and then I'm going to go to three seconds where the morphing text appears and Rotate it to let's say 180 degree. Now you can see the morphing text 
have been appeared in a wrong way or in the wrong direction but the rotation is proper so we need to fix that so i'm going to go into my text comp and select the morphing layer and hit s to bring down the scale properties and unlink the scale properties and then i'm going to make this minus 100 there we go and that has been fixed pretty nicely you can see it is looking pretty nice and pretty good all right so i'm happy with it now we need to easy ease the camera rotation so to give a little bit of dramatic kind of effect i'm going to go to graph editor and create kind of a peak of motion which i like to say peak of motion which gives a really nice and subtle motion to it in the center it's going to be pretty fast and at the end and at the beginning it's going to be subtle you can see looking pretty good all right i'm happy with it Now we're getting a little bit of glitch kind of fun thing so we need to fix that i'm just gonna zoom in select my text and particles and just just hit t to bring down the opacity just bring this keyframe a bit backwards or maybe forward all right now it's looking pretty better Okay, it's looking pretty nice than before now. Now we can also add a motion blur to the particles. So I'm gonna turn on, turn on my motion blur. So that we get some really nice motion blur. You can see it looks really nice. And we can also go ahead and just turn on our depth of field, maybe the aperture to around 200. Okay, this is looking pretty nice. You see it gives a really nice realism to it. Then I'm going to create a new solid and name this BG. So create a really subtle and nice background. Then I'm going to go to effects and control and type in ramp, R-A-M-P. And just drag the gradient ramp onto the BG. And I'm going to make this color a subtle dark red or maroon, whatever you like to say. All right, there we got a BG. Then I'm going to go and create a new adjustment layer. Name this CC for color correction. And I'm gonna go and type in glow and drag that glow effect onto the adjustment layer that we just created. And just bring this up to let's say 75 and let's say 300. The radius of glow should be very high in order to make it look pretty seamless. It gives a really nice, you know, kind of a character to our comp. You can also bring this up from 8 by pixels to 16 by pixels and this is gonna give get rid of that kind of bendings you can say the color bendings that we get so you can also pump that up to 32 bit but 16 should work good then i'm gonna do a little bit of curves adjustment just to make the you know make the effect pop out a little bit more just make a subtle changes some really subtle changes this is absolutely on you guys the way you want to edit it So I think this is looking pretty sweet. Yeah. So I guess that's the end of the tutorial and I hope it was helpful to you guys and if it was don't forget to subscribe, comment and like and I'll see you in my next video. Till then take care and thanks for watching guys.